facility in the, in the payment system in Medicare were the two things that doctors really asked for going into this health care debate. They didn't get either. And uh, as a consequence, I mean, you've seen the, the polls where, where doctors are disappointed in what this bill is doing, and a, a great number of them now, as many as 30 percent, may be considering retirement or early retirement as a consequence of this bill. Parenthetically, we're, we're going to hire, what, 17,000 new IRS agents, so we're going to lose a third of our doctors and add 17,000 IRS agents. That's not the direction that the American people want to see us go. Is, is that a realistic number? 30 percent of physicians would consider retiring? That seems like a very, very high number, sir. It does seem high, but, but bear in mind the backdrop of this with the, the tensions we've had in, with liability problems for years, the tensions we've had with the continuous reductions in reimbursement in Medicare and then consequently the private sector as well. Most doctors are functioning under a great deal of duress right now. You throw this bill in on top of them and say, look, you're going to get to see more patients, but we will pay you less. Uh, it's, no, it's no surprise that they look at their lives and say, maybe it's time for me to adjust things and do something differently. If, if this bill passes this afternoon or this evening, uh, in what way is your medical practice directly affected tomorrow morning or next month? What's the immediate impact on you as a doctor of the passage of this bill, if it passes? Well, the, the immediate effect, of course, is the increase in taxes, because most of the health benefits that... Uh, that are going to allegedly cover people who are uninsured, those don't kick in for another four years, give or take some time. The other aspect that you have to remember is it's a big bill, a 2,700-page bill, but then all of that goes over to the Department of Health and Human Services. They write the rules and regulations. They put the rules up for, for public comment. There is going to be a tremendous amount of regulatory activity that occurs as a consequence of this bill. And, you know, right now we don't even know who the head of the administrator of the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services is. That, that position has been vacant since Inauguration Day. So you don't really know the precise nature of the health care changes that will be enacted. You know as a small business person your, your taxes are going up and you're, you're quite sure that sir, there are some additional mandates that are coming your way and just those in and of themselves, the capital gains tax is going to increase, the tax on medical devices, medical supplies is going to, is going to be out there. And bear in mind when a doctor in their office administers something and that medical device is taxed, the insurance company doesn't pay the tax. That's not part of their negotiated rate. So actually, it's the poor physician that ends up picking up the tab for that. Now, most of the people who've appeared on this program today, in Congress and outside, assume that this will pass. Somehow or other, it will pass. Would that be your assessment, sir? No, sir. I do not think they have the votes right now. I think if they, when they, you will know they have the votes because that's when we will be voting. Uh, right now, we're just doing some inconsequential suspension bills uh, over there. We would have been back and voting all night had they had the votes. The fact is, here's the problem. It's not Republicans that are obstructing this. They don't have the popular support of the American people. And if you want to do something that's this big a lift, yeah, it'd be great to have some Republicans, but you really ought to have the American people on your side before you start. And they don't. Okay. Congressman Michael Burgess, Republican, Texas, thanks for joining us, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you, Stuart.